Hello, Tigers, this is your captain speaking. Your five minute flight begins now. Three effects or reasons are commonly attributed to why airplanes fly. These are number one, Kawanda effect, number two, the Bernoulli effect or pressure velocity conversion effect, and number three, Newton's third law. Well, that's it. Now you know how airplanes fly and we can all go home. Just kidding. I know what you're thinking. Kawanda, Bernoulli effect, these mean nothing. What do they mean? Well, let's find out. Kawanda effect is the tendency of a fluid to flow along a solid surface and follow its curvature rather than separate away from it. Here is an example of the Kawanda effect in action. See how the ping pong ball is kept afloat by the hair dryer? Believe it or not, this is the same effect that contributes to keeping airplanes airborne. Let's see how. Here we see a small wing placed inside a wind tunnel. Notice how the cross section of an airplane wing is of a very specific shape. It is flat on the bottom and curved on the top, almost resembling a teardrop. This is what we call an aerofoil shape. The flow of air is visualized by streamlines which tend to change with the direction of airflow. When the wind hits the leading edge of the wing, instead of bouncing off of its top surface, the air hugs the curvature of the wing. That is, the flow curves itself. It follows a path identical to the curvature of the top surface. As such, it follows the downward slope of the wing's upper surface, creating a wash of air that continuously flows downwards from the trailing edge of the wing. This is called the downwash. Since there is a mass flow rate of air continuously flowing downwards, it creates an upward reaction force which pulls the wing up. This is what seems to push the wing upwards and make it fly along with the entire airplane attached to it. This upward reaction force is what we call lift. This ends our first explanation about how airplanes fly. Now let's fly over to the explanation number two. This is somewhat the more popular explanation behind how airplanes fly. However, in recent times, there has been much debate regarding this theory's ability to explain flight. We will simply present all possible explanations to you and leave you to decide for yourselves whether or not it applies. The Bernoulli effect, simply put, is the tendency of a fluid to decrease its pressure when its velocity increases and vice versa. The actual Bernoulli principle is a little too complicated for an introductory video such as this. But this much I can say. It is nothing but a corollary of the conservation of energy principle. Roughly stated, the sum of kinetic energy and pressure energy of a fluid is always constant. So if one increases, the other must decrease. Hence, it's also called the pressure velocity conversion effect. Notice what happens to the streamlines above the leading edge of the wing once it pitches up. They get constricted. That is, the flow area is reduced. This causes the fluid to flow faster. This is not any different from how we squeeze the mouth of a gardening hose to make the water jet more swift. This principle of increase in flow velocity due to the reduction in flow area is called the continuity effect. Notice how the airflow on the bottom of the surface of the wing does not curve or constrict as much as that on the top. As such, the flow velocity remains somewhat unaltered over there. This shows clearly that the velocity of airflow above the wing is greater than that below. And so, as per the Bernoulli principle, pressure above the wing must be lower than that below. That is, pressure under the wing is greater than that above. This greater pressure pushes the wing upwards and generates the much so desired lift force. Which brings us to the second transit of today's flight. Newton's third law states, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. When the wind strikes the bottom surface of a wing that is pitched upwards, this wind is deflected downwards. Thus an equal and opposite reaction force must be created upwards on the wing, which causes the airplane to fly fly away. So in review, we can say that there is no single reason that contributes to the flight of an airplane. The real reason aircraft can fly is because their wings have a very special shape. This special shape can take advantage of different physical phenomenon and factors such as the Kwanda effect, the Bernoulli effect and Newton's third law. It is due to the combined effect of multiple factors that wings generate an upward force known as lift. And it is this lift that helps an airplane take to the sky and soar up high amongst the clouds. 
Well, Tigers, having said that, your destination approaches. Happy landing and good luck.